Our first TED talk, if you like, is uh, from Matt Stigzelius, who is the CEO of Takubi. Take it away, Matt. Is it on? Oh, gosh. <laughs> right. I don't know if it's going to carry or not, but like, let's see how it goes. So, technical problem number one. So, why do social influencer posts have three times the engagement of ads on the same social feed? Um, ads tend to be better targeted. They tend to be shot by professionals in a studio with models. So, what is it that makes influencer posts perform so well? So, I think it's all about the human connection. So it's the storytelling and engagement that influencers have with their followers. And I think it's the engagement between people. And that's what makes influencer marketing so powerful. So today I'm going to talk about how to get influencer marketing right. But we'll start by talking about how to get it wrong. So this is not social influence. Uh, this is celebrity endorsement gone very, very wrong. So social influence is not about copy-pasting blurbs from your PR agency. And it's not about lending your social channel to pre-created content by brands. It's, it's much more than that. These are real, by the way. I didn't make them up. <clears throat> this is also not uh, social influence. This is basically, and again, real profile. This is someone who wants to appear much more popular on social media than they really are. And in this, in this case, they've bought followers five times in the last year. So if you as a brand were planning to use this influencer uh, on your brand campaign, then you're basically exposing your brand to a bot farm in India. So I, I guess you, you, you get the idea. But before we go any further, let's first talk about why you should care about influencer marketing in the first place. I will get better at this. So <clears throat> in, in simple terms, uh, influencer marketing has impact. Um, it alters the perception and purchase behavior of consumers who are on social media. And to prove the point, we actually carried out a poll with YouGov last month where, where we surveyed social media users about their behavior. And what you can see from the results is that nearly half of under 35 year olds have actually bought a product or a service on the back of seeing it on their social media influencers post. Now that's for under 35 year olds. You can see that that doesn't quite translate to all the demographics yet because they're slow adopters, but they will get there. But already now, um, influencers have real impact on, on your brand. And in fact, um, you can now build a a brand uh, and a company just on the back of social media and influencers like Daniel Wellington, uh, Revolve and Glossier have done already. And just to kind of prove the point, Kylie Jenner has actually built the sixth fastest growing company in history. Uh, I think she generated something like $420 million in the first 18 months uh, just on the back of her own social media posts. So, uh, Oops, sorry. So I think it's clear that influencer posts do work and they do have impact. So the question is, how do you make it work for your brand? Um, so let's start with data. So influencer marketing is not about data. It is, of course, very important. So data is good for reporting. It's good for... Um, targeting your campaigns, but it's not a differentiator. So everyone has ultimately access to the same data. So if you're using Instagram, you're using Instagram's data. So it's not a differentiator, it's a hygiene factor. So influencer marketing is much more than just data. So as I said, it's really about the human connection. It's about the creative talent and how those influencers share their stories with their followers. And not only are the influencers very talented, but they actually deeply care about their followers, especially smaller influencers. And they want to add value to their 
follower base, they want to inform, they want to entertain. So, you know, it's a, it's a deeper personal relationship than, than you would expect. And because of that, a good influencer marketing campaign must allow them to tell your brand story in their voice. And it's really, really important to kind of make that point. So the quality of the message and the messenger matter a great deal in terms of a, a good campaign. So let's start by talking about influencers. I guess it's uh, fair to say that not all influencers are created equal. Just because you have a following on Instagram or any other social media platform, it doesn't mean that you're right uh, uh, to work with a brand. You might not have the creative talent, the storytelling uh, capabilities, or you might not even be brand safe. And very much as we saw earlier, your followers might not be real. Uh, and I'd go as far as to say that if you've had a bad, in anyone who runs a brand or uh, works with clients who do influencer marketing, I think if you've had a bad experience on a campaign before in influencer marketing, it's most likely because of bad influencer selection. So the vetting of uh, influencers is absolutely critical in terms of your influencer marketing campaigns. And just to kind of put it in context, we, uh, as in Takumi, when, when influencers apply to get on our platform, we actually only accept like 7% of those influencers. And the other 93% get rejected based on their follower base, their brand safety, their creative talent, their storytelling skills. And that's before we actually then choose influencers from that talent pool to participate on a particular campaign. So there's a lot of poor quality influencers out there and you have to make sure that you, you take your vetting very, very seriously. Now the good news is that there's lots of very, very good influencers out there. And what we tend to find is that uh, the smaller influencers actually tend to uh, be better. Uh, they're better at their, well, creative talent, their storytelling, they're closer to their followers. And, um, and actually, the good news is that with platforms like Takumi and many of the others out there, it's actually really easy now to work with large numbers of the smaller influencers on your campaigns and you can still reach very, very large audiences with them. So the second critical element of successful influencer marketing is the brief. Um, I think this often gets overlooked in terms of its critical importance in terms of uh, creating a campaign, especially with a lot of sort of influencer marketing tech platforms out there. They kind of tend to skip over this bit of their narrative. Um, but to me, it's like, it's no different than you buying a TV campaign and not spending the effort on getting the creative right and therefore the whole thing doesn't work. So to me, like the way I like to think about the brief is it's a box. So on the what, and you have like two different dynamics that kind of play against each other. On the one side, you need to allow the creative freedom of the influencers to be maximized so that they can make your story their own. Um, they need to be able to adapt your campaign to fit their, them and their followers. But at the same time, um, you need to make sure that your brand objectives are, are met uh, from the campaign as well. So in a bit more detail, the first thing you need to make sure is that your campaign is aligned with the medium. So it needs to um, sit naturally in the feed. And the way to test this is to, to ask yourself, if this influencer wasn't being paid for this campaign, would they post it? And if it's like, ooh, it's a bit awkward, it feels a bit unnatural, then you've got the wrong campaign. The second thing is that you have to make sure that it's aligned with the, each individual influencer. So if you think of like each influencer's feed, they have their own particular style and format and stories to, uh, telling style, and they have to be able to adapt that overall campaign to fit with their feed, so that you have to give them that freedom to take that style of photography that they normally do, that kind of narrative that they normally do. Then you have to make sure that the campaign posts are authentic, clearly signposted, and, and clear. And, 
actually, what we find is that, well, first of all, all the campaign posts have to have like clear signposting, like hashtag ad nowadays, um, and we enforce it. But you also actually find that the better influencers are very upfront and honest with their followers when it comes to these posts. And oftentimes, they actually perform better than their organic posts because all, you know, the followers aren't stupid. They know that you're working with the brand. So you might as well actually, try and, instead of trying to cover up that relationship, they turn it into a positive. And then um, you have to make sure that the brief is complete. So it needs to have enough information about it in terms of the instructions, the logistics details, but also red lines. So you know, nowadays it's more and more important also to make sure that you cover, you tell them the things that they can't talk about. So if it's a health brand, uh, if it's a food brand, you can't talk about unsubstantiated health benefits and things like that because you know it, it goes against advertising. Standards. So it takes quite a bit of effort to think through the creative brief and especially the alignment with the medium and the influencers. But once you get it right, you know, magic happens. Uh, right influences and a great brief means that you get really natural, um, natural content that's kind of native to the, to, to the uh, social media channel. And it works for pretty much any vertical and industry group that you would find on social media channels. Um, and you know, we have so many examples of campaigns. We've done like 2,000 campaigns now, and really there aren't that many categories where you'd struggle uh, to come up with a campaign uh, concept. And when you get it, when you do the whole campaign, actually what you end up with is a a uh, very large group of individual influencer posts. Um, and they're all different, but they're actually telling the same story, your brand story, in their own way to their own audiences. And that's really the power of it. So it's not only a channel, though. It's also a way of creating um, really powerful creative content to power your other marketing activities. And this is not like, like even two, two, maybe three years ago, this isn't like something that brands uh, thought about very much. But like now more and more of our clients are starting to use the content to power their own social channels, uh, web content, uh, email marketing, and paid ads. And actually, this is something that I would encourage every brand in here to, if you haven't done it already, then please test it. Because all you have to do is swap your professional photography that you use in your current ad campaigns and swap it for the, ad, uh, the creative that's done by the influencers and keep the targeting, everything else the same. And you will, well, I can't promise it, but you should see a significant uplift in the ad performance of your campaigns. Just this is an example from one of our major US media clients. You can see just from the quote that like, they had a massive uplift in, in both the conversion rate and the lowering of their CPAs. And um, where influencer marketing is now heading is, it's, well, specifically Instagram. It's been very focused on brand marketing so far because of, you, know, you haven't been able to put hyperlinks and captions and so forth. But actually, it's moving towards direct response marketing. So there's brands already using the content to do shoppable posts and clickable posts. But in the near future, we can expect the influencer posts to be directly um, uh, responsive as well. And then, of course, we shouldn't forget the, the sort of emergence of videos popularity when it comes to influencer marketing. Um, we don't think it's really uh, suited yet, at least, for long form, long form narrative, uh, you know, more than 10 seconds long. But it seems to be working really well for like, what we call mood videos, so things like loops, cinemagraphs, time lapses, and obviously IG stories. And influencers are actually starting to be quite comfortable producing this sort of motion-based video rather than like, narrative and more complex edited video. So just to conclude, um, influencer marketing is now really a mainstream activity. Most of our clients use it 
as part of their marketing mix on most campaigns. Um, it's not really about data. Data is obviously important, but what it really is is about is about the quality of the influencers and the brief. So you have to spend time and effort getting those two things right. And my suggestion is that you work with smaller influencers where possible because you know, both of those two things are enhanced by doing so. And obviously, um, I would encourage everyone to start looking at repurposing the content to drive your other marketing channels. And you should be able to see pretty good improvement in, in, the, in the results as well. And really what it comes down to then is all of that's just uh, coming back to the, the first thing I said, which is that it's the human connection. So when you, do, when you get those two things right, influencers who care and a great brand story to tell, you get really successful influencer marketing campaigns. Thank you.